What up, y'all? It's your boy, Big Quint, on the face cam. About to give you all my first q and I'm doing it on this one so I don't run out of um, space to go ahead and, you know, film. And it's the best option for me. So we're going to just have to deal with this format for now. Straight into this Q&A, bruh. No introduction needed. Let's just hop into these questions. Jason Williams asked, If two rappers could make a collaboration album of your dreams, which two rappers would it be and why? Hmm. You know what? I would be really interested in listening to a Tupac, Lauryn Hill collaboration. I think that would be kind of tight. I'm not even going to lie. I think it would be just really, really interesting to hear, you know, Pac rack about something, you know, awesome or, you know, lovey W or whatever. I mean, Lauryn Hill, you know, basically compliment each other in that type of way. I think that would be kind of dope. Also, I think that uh, Biggie and a MF Doom album would be kind of weird, too. That would be kind of cool and weird at the same time, but I would like it. I would like the fuck out of that. God, I wish that would happen. <sighs> Jay David, love your videos, man. Here's my question. Favorite movie of all time? The most disappointing mixtape of all, or mixtape and album, Kill Bill. Yeah, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Huge Quentin Tarantino fan, love Pulp Fiction, but Kill Bill is one of my favorites from it for the simple fact that watching it with my dad, bruh, it just, we just enjoyed the fuck out of ourselves, but we was, oh, he chopped the head off. Just a really good time in my life where my dad and I were just, you know, sharing a moment where we were just enjoying this movie to the fullest extent. It's one of those movies I can go back to and watch it and just love the shit out of it. I really would hope to God that if in fact Quentin Tarantino is going to be retiring, that he actually finishes or adds on to the Kill Bill universe. I really hope so. I really do. And uh, most disappointing mixtape, I mean, or album, come on, beating bullets ahead. Jacob Gill asks, you have to get rid of one rapper, making it like they didn't exist, or one Dre, two Biggie, three Tupac, four Nas, five Kendrick Lamar. This is some bullshit. This is some bullshit. This is some straight bullshit. Well, Nas, Biggie, and Pac can't go nowhere, so those gotta stay. Well, you know what? Kendrick's awesome. Kendrick's my boy, man. But without Dre, I don't think there would be a Kendrick Lamar, honestly. Or it would probably be a lot harder for Kendrick Lamar to be put on, bro. But, man, I'm going to just say off of seniority alone, Kendrick Lamar got to go. <laughs> and that's just the rough That's the rough reality of it. Kendrick Lamar has got to go. Uh, he will be a part of, you know, the greats one day for sure. With those two albums alone, that he's definitely a contender for sure for the Hall of Fame. Let's just be real. But seniority alone, man, there's no way I could put Dre out of that one, bro. So, yeah, Kendrick's got to go. Elo Incarnation, I think. How your ass get so tall? My mom's got tall people on her side of the family. My dad is tall, so genetics, I guess. I guess. I kind of got lucky there, too, because we also got short people in our family as well. So, you know. You know, it worked out for me in the end, I guess. Crying Jordan ass. One gotta go. Here we go. Nas. Illmatic. Wu-Tang. 36 Chambers. Dre. The Chronic. Biggie ready to die. This some old horse shit. This some old motherfucking bullshit. <clears throat> well, Illmatic's gotta stay. It's just one of the greatest albums, hip hop albums of all time. Ready to Die, Can't Go Nowhere, fucking classic. One of my favorite albums. Oh, 36 Chambers, Fire. The Chronic, oh, The Chronic 2. Fuck it, I'm flipping a coin. I'm not going out, I'm flipping a coin. Cause either way it goes is bad. So you know what, it don't even matter. Heads, The Chronic. Tails, 36 Chambers. Heads it is, Chronic's gotta go. Cole Howard asks, <clears throat> what would you be more excited for? Would you be more excited if Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole finally dropped a collab album or if Frank Ocean dropped a surprise album out of nowhere? <laughs> either way it goes, we win. <laughs> either way it goes. I wouldn't be more excited for either one. I'm equally as excited. As a matter of fact, Frank Ocean is on some um, some uh, detox levels when it comes to releasing this new project. So, I mean, either way it goes. If he's dropping an album, I'm ready, period. If Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole finally decide to go ahead and go through with this thing, this collaboration thing, I'm ready. I'm like SpongeBob in this bitch. I'm ready in this motherfucker. I don't even care. Iker D. Ilker D. I don't know. Hey, yo, Quinn. Where'd you grow up, bro? Grew up in the Bay Area, Vallejo, California. I love that place. 
love it love it love it yes the burrito trucks the sunshine i love home y'all i love home sir sar sor hey big quint who's your top five dead or alive it would have to be nas biggie tupac lauren hill and mf doom nas biggie and pac are the reason why i love hip-hop um Lauren Hill has one of my favorite albums of all time, which is Miseducation. It's just one of those albums that I can play today and still will truly enjoy it. I mean, and I'm not saying the Illmatic or Ready to Die or All Eyes on Me don't have the same effect on me because they absolutely do. But Lauren Hill reminds me of home. You know what I'm saying? It reminds me of, you know, my mom and my dad and, you know, my sister and me all just, you know, in the house cleaning it up or having a good time. And it's just, that's just one of those albums that really play close to my heart you know what i'm saying especially the reason why it's in my top five in the first place but she also gave got me even more in, you know interested in hip-hop and you know added on to my love for hip-hop it's when mf doom when i was in high school my friend used to listen to mf doom all the time and he put me on to mf doom and mad villainy is just a goddamn masterpiece honestly it's just an incredible album and even and just incredible not even for its time but it's absolutely timeless in my opinion just an excellent album got me even more and just hooked on just, just hip hop, everything hip hop. Mr. J M K I, what are some of the most influential artists for you as you grew up? Most influential, like of course, like I said, Lauren Hill for sure, um, Pac, Bob Marley for sure, Erica Badu. Another one is definitely, definitely Michael Jackson. Vanity asks, what made you decide to do YouTube? you do youtube full time my boy dom asked me hey yo man you should do your reaction to thursday and so i said you know what fine i'll react to it and uh it worked <laughs> you know people started loving it people uh was they were laughing at it and enjoying it the weekend got a hold of it put it on his tumblr and the rest is fucking history basically so um yeah man yeah that's what basically made me say you know i want to do this youtube thing and um i don't do youtube full time i actually do have a job outside of youtube uh, I don't want to disclose where that is. Uh, the people who know, you know, who I am, they know where I'm at. Shout out to y'all. All right. Hey, it's Drake ask Critical question. Favorite snack for break time? Turkey sandwiches. Fucking love turkey sandwiches. Period. Justin Fredified 2 asks, how successful do you want to be in music? Are you taking it serious? I'm actually experimenting. Right now, I'm not really worried about truly being successful. I want to see if I could even get my foot in the door, if you will. Um... If in fact this music thing actually takes hold, that's gonna determine my work ethic. If in fact people seem to enjoy it and they seem to like you know what I'm doing, then uh, I'll keep at it. So we'll see. As an X and X, what is your favorite show to watch? Man, I love me some Game of Thrones, bro. I fucking love me some Game of Thrones, bro. That is my shit. That is my motherfucking shit. Like the first couple of seasons was rough to get through, boy, but boy. <laughs> Boy, it gets fucking moving, man. And ain't nobody saved. Everybody getting clapped in this bitch. I love, 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 love that show. That and Parks and Rec is my shit right now. I'm actually on the sixth season. Almost done with that one. Funny as all hell, man. Love that show. Jamie Jacquees asks, where did your love for music come from? My dad, mostly. My dad listened to a bunch of different music, man. Just a bunch of different shit. Just jazz, reggae, classical, Celtic, all kind of shit. Basically, anything he can get his hands on, he would, you know, listen to and you know we both listen to it and just enjoy the shit out of it so my love for him you know for music definitely came from my dad man and his taste in music and that basically rubbed off on me so yeah i got my dad to thank for that for sure if i'm fucking up your names sorry matt Florentine says what is your all-time favorite weekend song the knowing the knowing was my first song that i ever listened to by the weekend and that is still my favorite song from the weekend probably with a close second being wicked games absolutely love that song it just it's it's perfect both of them are fucking perfect alex low asks what has been your greatest achievement man well next to graduating from college i'd say hitting 200k you know on youtube man i didn't think it was going to get this big bro and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and i got y'all to thank for that bro like it's, it's insane to me that i'm still here like what six years later still doing my thing bro like it, it's crazy it's crazy bro and i'm now starting to add to this channel too and it's just it's a blessing it's a blessing man it truly is but yeah that's my probably my greatest achievement thus far until i hit 300k <laughs> and then i hit possibly a million hopefully but we, all we can do is try right so we gonna keep it going man as far as i can florin v 
Voltman asks, what's your opinion on death grips? They're necessary, super necessary. I think that them pushing the boundaries is something that the game needs right now, honestly. They are just so, so, so left field, man. It's just, whoo, 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 man. It's kind of, it's insanely hard to explain. Like, these motherfuckers is so left field that they, they, they even out the ball park, bro. They out of there. They, they gone. They gone somewhere there, bro, out there doing their own thing. And you know what? It's, it's necessary. I think they're necessary to the game, and I think that they should keep doing what they're doing. Fat Young Jesus asks, I've been watching for a couple of years now, and I have one question for you. How the fuck can you drink so much in one inhale? I'm like, during break time? You drink more than a prostitute in a camel fuse in one. <laughs> well, uh, I gig, thank you, I think. <laughs> Shit. Um, yeah, man. I went to school, and I took a class called Kill Your Cup 101. I passed like a motherfucker, okay? Everything was getting drained. Beer, water, hot tea, cold tea. It didn't matter what the fuck was in front of me. It was getting knocked back. You hear me? Straight back. Okay, so Matthews asks, knowing you're from the Bay Area, Voyo, I think, you're right. Why don't you do reactions of rappers slash singers from there? There's a lot of rappers coming up and growing up in the game right now. I'm thinking about, you know, HBK gang, Nefa Pharaoh, Mozzie. Yeah, you're right. For example, much love for French fam. <laughs> Shout out to you, Matthew. But, um, yeah, I would like to. I mean, Neff the Pharaoh is really, he reminds me of, um, of Loki and Matt Dre. You know what I'm saying? But he's still himself, which is awesome. And he has that, like, that aura of Matt Dre. He's from Vallejo, man. I really like what he's doing. You know, he's got that song big time, and I'm slapping that. I fucking love that song, bro. Man, I would like to do some more artists from the Bay Area, man. Also, uh, an artist named Kimaya, you know what I'm saying, is really fucking up the streets in Oakland, bro. And he, she has actually one of my favorite albums of this year. I would love to do more reactions for, you know, artists from the Bay Area, man. That would be awesome as fuck. Yeah, and I think I need to start doing some more, you know, artists from the Bay Area as well. So, hey, man, give me those requests, man. If you want to see some, man, throw them at me and make sure, you know, other people say the same. Star Khan asks, what type of ethnicity you like in females? Brazilian, Indian, etc. I like girls with pink pussies. Good heads on their shoulders. Cool people. Chill. Nice. Smart. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what the ethnicity is. I don't give a damn. You could be, you could be purple with aqua blue nipples. As long as you cool as shit, I fuss with you. I fuss with you. Ethnicity don't really matter to me, man. Will Smith asks, what type of speakers do you use? And get in there. Eh. Yeah, these are speakers, man. They're insignia. And yeah, the Bluetooth speakers. They're uh, fucking awesome. Honestly, I fucking love these damn speakers, man. Grizz G asks, <laughs> where did you learn your dope dance moves? Congrats on, on 200K also. Oh, well, thank you, bro. <laughs> I don't fucking dance, bro. I just be feeling it, man. I just be moving. You feel me? That's what I do. I move. But thanks anyway, man. I'm glad you like my dance moves, I guess. Jose Morales asks, how often have your views changed on an album slash song that you didn't like first listening to it? And if so, what album or song? At first, I thought the acid rap was complete garbage, but whoo, I was wrong. I was so wrong. Well, Jose, this has happened. But the most recent, I would probably say was, um, ASAP Rocky's newest album uh, was like long, at long last ASAP. That album definitely grew on me afterwards. I thought it was like okay, like I wasn't too blown away by it. But man, after the like third, fourth listen, man, I wish I could have done like a redo of my final verdict because that album was so dope to me afterwards bro and it's still dope to me and i think like you know him doing something different and actually separating himself from you know like a mainstream sound was really cool and really ballsy as well so yeah shout out to asap rocky for that one that shit was dope don't know ass favorite cereal honey bunches of oh jason matt's ass would you rather react to a lyrical album and you would have to sit down and comprehend like to be a butterfly or react to less complex albums that you can just vibe and dance to both <laughs> both man i fucking love to be a butterfly i sat there and comprehended the fuck out of that motherfucker love the shit out that album 
But hey, man, I also love albums like Still Brazy. You know what I'm saying? They have like more so straightforward, you know, um, uh, theme to it. And also a straightforward message to it as well. Either way it goes, bro. Like, I love music. You know what I'm saying? I love the fact that if, in fact, I have to sit down and comprehend it, that just adds on to it. Like, that adds on to the complexity of, you know, the art. And that's something that, you know, I enjoy as well. I love it all. What do you think is Kanye West's best album? Hmm. Kanye West's best album. I, I wonder what it could be. I wonder what Kanye West's best album could be. Hey yo, so um, if y'all enjoyed these uh this Q and A, man, I might keep doing this, bro. I might, I might just keep the questions coming, man. You know, just ask me whatever, man. I might want to, you know, sit back and just go ahead and you know, talk to y'all a little bit. It's your boy Big Quint, indeed. Big Quint, indeed.